In this video, I'm going to show you two different methods for casting on with your ribber, adding needles. So one is if you've been knitting regular stockinette and then you want to start doing ribbing like this. And then the second method is if you want to start your selvage edge right with some ribbing. So I will show you both of those. Let's get started. I've cranked down a number of rows, so I'm sure my setup bonnet is not going to be in the way of the river stopper and the fin. And I put my weight back in. And then I have my main mark is right here. I'm going to move that about to six o'clock. So here is where the fin is. The, I'm sorry, the river stopper. So as I mentioned on the assembly video, you want to line up the fin so it's going straight down where the river stopper is. And then you put it in place, kind of hold it in place while you take your bolt just by hand. You can usually put that all the way in and tighten it down. You can and do the other side as well. Now this is your working area right here. This is the best place to add and remove needles. There are a couple of different ways to do this, but the best way is that I like to do is I've got my loom tool and I've pulled my needle forward, the one that lines up with the river dial, and I've lifted the needle, the stitch off the needle. Now, making sure that my river needle has the latch open, I'm going to lay it into the slot and kind of hold it there so that then I can put the stitch right on the needle. I'm not sure you can see that. And I kind of tug from the bottom. So then you crank just a tiny bit until the next needle is ready. I'll show you again and try to keep my hand out of the way. Okay, so this is my next slot and this is my next stitch that I'm going to transfer. So I pull the needle forward and insert my loom tool to lift it off. And then I take that needle completely out of work. Then I have my ribber needle ready to go. And I lay that in the slot but I try to kind of hold it with my finger. You want to make sure the latch is open and then you pull the stitch up and over the needle, making sure that the latch is still open. And again, then I kind of like tug at the bottom a little bit to make sure it's nice and snug in there. Here, we'll do another one together. Pull the needle forward. And this is for one by one rib if you use every single slot. Another really common option is three by one rib. So then you would skip every other ribber needle. So it would be three cylinder needles for every one ribber needle. Lay my needle in and put the stitch up on top, give it a tug. So that's all there is to it, all the way around the cylinder. There is one more method I want to show you that you can use as long as you're careful. You start by taking the ribber needle and using it to pick up the stitch. Okay, so I'm now holding the stitch on the ribber needle and I can take out the cylinder needle. This is the tricky part. You have to make sure that the stitch doesn't fall below the latch. So I kind of pinch it, you can see right there, pinched it, and then put it in. And as long as you're careful, you can make sure that latch stays open and the stitch stays at the front. But it's critical because if the latch is not open, as the cylinder turns toward the yarn feeder, you'll drop that stitch. So let me show you one more time. You pick up the stitch with the little ribber needle. 
remove the cylinder needle and then you can just I pinch it carefully with my one hand while I lay the needle in place with my other hand and that I'm just really sure that that latch stays open and the stitch stays in front of it after you've added the first few needles as the first one gets toward the yarn feeder you want to stop and make sure that your yarn feeder is lined up correctly this is as you want it to be so that the there's room for the ribber needle to pass under the yarn feeder and again you want the yarn feeder to be pretty close to the needles about a credit card's width away to make sure that you aren't going to drop any stitches i'm actually going to tighten that up a little so make sure it's securely in place about a credit card's width away from the needles and about this much space between the river dial and the top of the yarn feeder. Next, I wanna show you how to do Juana's selvage cast on. This is when you want the edge of the project to be uh, ribbed. So you might do this at the top of a cuff down sock, for instance. So you start by putting the ribber on when you're still testing the, uh, testing the tension, you're doing a swatch to test the tension of your stitch, make sure it's going to be set up like you want for your sock. And then you put the ribber on and figure out where the ribber needles will line up. And you actually take all of those out and you cast on with just every other needle. And you crank quite a ways. You can see that the cast on is all the way down here. So you crank with a number of rows uh, so that uh, there's nothing in the way of where the fin and the river dial will line up. And now here is my main mark. So I'm getting ready to switch to my project yarn. I'm going to cut my yarn. I'm going to crank this over until it's the stitch just past the main mark. And then I'm going to put on my project yarn. I'm going to clip them together with a weighted clip. And then make sure that my project yarn is catching right on that first stitch as well. Now you're going to crank around until your main mark is about at six o'clock, five to six o'clock, so that your you can see where the ribber stop is and then as always we're going to line up the side of the fin so it goes straight down beside the ribber stopper and then add the bolts to the ribber frame I'm just going to push back a little bit to make sure that really is snug against there and it is. Now I'm going to add my ribber needles starting with the first one. Make sure you put the needle in and make sure the latch is open and then you're going to reach in between the cylinder and the ribber dial and pick up the yarn that was going between those two needles and just lay it on top of the needle. And again, as always, I kind of tug at the bottom just to make sure that the yarn is well seated. You can gently pull up on the ribber to reach under with your loom tool and get the stitch. There we go. And just crank one needle at a time until you've done all the way around the cylinder. That's really all there is to it. By the time you get back around, so I've just put in my last uh, needle, rubber needle. By the time I get back around, the first ones that I did have already been knit once. And so again, you can just keep a close eye as you go around and then you just keep cranking. This is the finished Juana's Selvage cast on edge. 
and to get it to do this, I just cut off the waist yarn um, from my setup bonnet, which is really easy to do because it has the, you, you only had cast on every other row. Um, so it's very thin and easy to just snip that away. And then this is what you're left with. I just wanted to note though that you want to be a little bit gentle as you pull on this. It's um, It can easily pull the stitches kind of out of shape. You can fix it if you block them, but normally I don't block my socks. So you just want to be a little gentle and cut them away. And then once you cut through the waist yarn, you can just pull the individual pieces out really easily. So those are two different ways to cast on either in the middle of a project or right at the beginning to start a cast on selvage row of ribbing. Visit us at deanandbean.com and please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.